Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at the underside of the Tacoma 2024 Tacoma, the 2024 Colorado, and the 2024 Frontier. All the basic non TRD models. I want to look at the frame, suspension, transmission pans, things like that, and just see how things are designed. I also wanted to check out one key part of the trucks, which is the ADD and the four wheel drive system up front that failed on the Tacoma. And if you look a little later in the video, I'll show you how the Frontier designed a little differently. Not saying it's better or worse, just saying, you know, take it or leave it. And let's jump into this video and we'll take a look underneath. All right, let's start here with the Tacoma. I will say it is a gorgeous truck. I like this color. I don't know why. I, I didn't think I'd like this color until I saw it in person and it looked fantastic to me. One thing you will notice here, up here in this area, it says made in Mexico. That's normal. I believe the last one was being made there as well. See a quality difference, you know, between this and the Forerunner and issues that they're having, but I think that's the way a lot of these are going. I think the Frontier was made in the US. A lot of the reliability in a truck has to do with the engineering and the way the parts are manufactured, not necessarily how they're assembled. It's about forty or $44,000 for this. And you'll see here, you know, shot at the suspension. This is just a basic suspension and compared to, you know, say the... A lot of the videos that you see online, you know, most of the suspensions I've seen are, you know, in this area, you're looking at all the upgraded suspension for the TRD pros. And, and I just wanted to take a look at what does the base Tacoma look like? And everything in here looks really solid. The frame thickness looks solid. Everything looks, you know, as expected, it does look more beefy than the old version. One thing I'm pointing out here in the video, you'll notice that that front spoiler. And I, I will say this has been men mentioned in other videos, but look at this. That's how much ground ground clearance. I mean, my hands, I can, I can palm a basketball to give you an idea, but, and I'm six one, but it's, you know, my hands aren't abnormally huge. So for me to be able to just put my thumb on the ground and touch that front spoiler is pretty irritating. I mean, you would buy in a truck. I'd have to remove that. I just, I'm not a pavement queen truck guy. I go off road sometimes. I don't want that thing hitting rock. So that kind of bugs me, but you know, just minor detail. Everybody else has pointed that out as well. It's just kind of irritating on a truck. And if you take a look in this area, the ADD is back here. That's what failed on the TLFL truck. We'll get, we'll get a little better image of that here shortly. Uh, you'll notice too, a lot of this is just open on this truck. Um, and then right here where my fingers are, it's like a felt really cheap felt. And I know people have pointed this out before, but to not use some metal here, for the price that Toyota is wanting for this truck is absolutely ridiculous. Toyota, I don't know what you're thinking. This is a truck. It's not a car. Put some proper protection for the differential and other things under here. There's absolutely no excuse for this. It doesn't cost that much to add at least aluminum here. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, it, and you're not even protecting that much. This is just the kind of the intro to the underneath of this truck. So this totally irritates me. And there's a, you know, a decent amount of cross bracing here. It looks a lot like the other trucks you'll see here in a minute. And this looks decent. You know, you've got, you don't have plastic on the transmission pan and the oil pan. So most of the stuff looks good. I couldn't tell behind these lines on the transmission lines. They do use flex lines and I would prefer to see like a mandrel bent aluminum or, you know, just a solid aluminum piece there. And here's a shot of the other side, a little bit better look at that frame. It is a really beefy frame. So you can see how the size of that frame up front, good size. Uh, although I will add in the engineering video released from Toyota, they actually reduced, shrunk the thickness of the frame. So it, it bugged me that they said that they actually shrunk down the thickness, made it thinner in spots and then reinforced it in other spots. I don't like that, especially since Toyota hasn't had really a great track record with their frames. And here's a good shot of the differential cast iron diff and then aluminum here. This is the ADD and there's that same diff with the CV here from a different angle. Get under here a little bit more and see that ADD. We'll pause it right there. This is what failed on that, uh, allegedly what failed uh, according to Toyota on that TFL truck. My personal opinion is that this part itself, this actuator did not fail. I think it was something inside this aluminum housing, a spline or collar. So just my opinion, take it or leave it. You can have your own opinion. And as you can see here, good cross bracing. Uh, I'll show you in the Frontier video how that frame differs. One thing you'll notice, look at how low that frame hangs. Definitely felt a little bit lower than the Colorado. Frontier and the Tacoma might be similar. 
move on back to this uh, different style suspension. I do want to point out something here. I'm not sure if this is going to become an issue or not, but if you notice a lot of trucks, you know, the shock mounts are in this area here. There's a lot of low hanging fruit on the Tacoma and specifically with these shocks that come down here, look at how low they hang on the back wheel there. I don't know if it'll become a problem or not, but if you're, you know, say on a rock or something and, and your tire slips off or you misjudge something, I would imagine that's just going to hammer the shock mount and drag and, you know, compared to the other trucks where the axle is and how far down those hang, maybe they ride better. Maybe it's a better, more car-like ride, but not sure this is going to be better for off-roading or, or in certain situations. It might be, it might totally be. It just caught me a little bit. You know, it's, it's a different design. You'll see on the Frontier and the Colorado both right there. It's a lot of distance underneath. We've got the coils up there. Of course, it's a completely new, different design. So kind of have to judge for yourself. A lot of open space in this new platform up top. A lot of air. Does look easy to work on though. And here's a you know shot of the engine. We've had better shots, you know, in other channels where the engine's exposed just on the frame. Um, all pretty exposed here. A lot of openings, a lot of you know areas for water and anything to get in here, which I guess that's pretty normal on this new platform. They do have a you know the new style, more traditional oil filters rather than those uh, paper inserts that we've been used to for so many years. I do think the frame on this it's very thick. You know, it it, it looks beefy. I just don't when you compare it to the old model, uh, and we'll show that here in this video as well. I compare the old Tacoma, there was one on the lot. So I just kind of took some shots under there. This frame does look a lot thicker and a little more rigid than the old taco. And you know, it's just a different design. It should be better. It's newer. And for the price, gosh, it should be way better. Here's a shot of the transfer case. And that's, you know, where the front looks decent. The transfer case is I've never had an issue with my Toyota transfer cases, so it looks a little smaller than the Frontiers in the Colorado, but I don't know that size is going to matter in your transfer case. It's it's more, you know, the parts inside that matter and how it functions with the uh, actuators. Underneath, it looks looks solid for a standard, just kind of a base truck. It's not, obviously, as you can see here, I mean, nothing is covered, right? You've got, this is the transmission pan here does have the typical transmission drain plug just like all the other toyotas you have the drain and the check plug and you got to go through the procedure of heating it up to 100 degrees to test out you know to get your transmission level right but uh, it all looks pretty standard toyota to me it looks very similar just a little bit better built than the previous gens and that looks like a metal housing as well on the bottom of the transmission that's you know it's tucked up far enough you're not going to be like nailing it on stuff if you're doing light off-roading but if it were me i would be putting up trd plates underneath this is really the the killer for me man i i absolutely can't stand the location of this tailpipe don't know what they were thinking it feels like a major oversight to me just look at the angle of that if you're dropping off of rocks and doing all sorts of things, even just on a ranch up and down some roads, you're going to, you're going to drag that tailpipe. I don't care who you are. So it's the worst location tailpipe out of all the trucks I looked at, even compared to the old one should be tucked, you know, six to eight inches in towards the tire and, and that height would probably be okay. Frame gets a little thinner back here, obviously in the back, but, uh, still decent, has good cross bracing and a lot of this is just open. Look at this new platform. It's just so open. I mean, I guess it looks easy to work on, but then you can see there the composite bed. I can push it. Honestly, kind of feels like a kayak material. <laughs> not not the strongest, but oh well. Uh, we're going to take a look at this 2017 and just do a real quick comparison. Not going to be in depth, just a comparison. Like if you look here, so this is a 2017 Tacoma. I mean, even this with the, you look at the tires are probably a little bigger, but look at the ground clearance difference there. You know, that's, you know, it's, it's a couple inches there, but the tires are a little beefier. I don't think those tires are that much bigger. I'd have to go look at the, the size, but it does, it does sit up a little higher. One thing to know too, these older Tacomas, I don't think they had as much room in the cab. So, you know, you get a little bit more tucked up on these that you'll notice here. If you look at the old Tacoma, you just, if you just drew a line from this back bumper, or even to, from the body down to this tire, look at the departure angle there. And 
the exhaust, it's not going to get hung up on a lot of rocks. The same thing with the Frontier. The Frontier Frontier sort of splits the difference between this. Maybe it's a little bit closer to the older Tacoma, so they did a little better job of their tailpipe location if you are four-wheeling. And it's hard to tell here, but that frame on the old Tacoma is definitely, you know, it's a, it's a, a smaller frame in back. And, you know, it's not going to make a world of difference. Most people aren't going to care. It just offers a little more rigidity, I'm sure, on the new one, which you would expect for the money, right? And there's a little bit less cross bracing going on back here compared to the new gen. And here's a look at the the old rear diff, the old suspension. You know, we're not going to go over this that long because this is yeah you know, everybody knows this platform, so it's pretty pretty tried and true. And here's a shot of that front suspension on the the old model. You know, not a it's not like there's a drastic difference, but you will see. Hey, look at that big old metal skid plate under there, and then they got the old cast iron diff. Just you know, the new one has the cast iron diff, but it's not it's not cast iron all the way. Looks like someone changed the fluid on this one recently. Either that or it's leaking. And you'll see there, this is the old one. Got got a it's, this piece is different. Actually, the the pumpkin itself looks very similar, but this piece here where the ADD connects is different on the old one. There's the there's the old ADD. These used to fail as well, but I didn't hear or see a lot of failures inside the axle here. All right, so let's move on to this beautiful blue frontier it is the sl 4x4 not an off-road edition and we'll start comparing the frontier frontier to what we just saw with the tacoma first thing you obviously notice is the exhaust pipe location on the frontier is tucked up a lot higher and not quite as far back so it's st it's still not you know where the 2017 tacoma was that we looked at i think that was you know in this area i think they still could have brought it forward a little bit made it a little bit better but this is light years ahead of where the new Tacoma is, you know, just little details like that. They can be changed, but I just don't think you should have to change them. You're spending 40,000, 45,000 on a brand new truck. Come on. It's, it's 2024 design it right. There's another shot. That's the uh, pro four X. So not a lot of difference, but it is tucked up and you'd have enough, you know, if you're, if you're coming through, you'd have enough, you'd be dragging that back hitch before you'd be, before you'd be dragging or hitting the exhaust pipe. So looking under this frontier, first thing, you know, the rear diff, the the drive line, everything looked really beefy. One thing I did notice, these have been sitting a long time. And as you've maybe seen in my other videos, I'll post it at the end of this. These trucks have been sitting a while and they're trying to deal on these frontiers. When I went to the lot to record and I told them what I was doing, they were like wanting to sell me one bad. And judging by this little superficial rust under here, uh, they've been sitting all winter and that's why all these leaves are piled up from the fall but looking underneath you know this frame very solid frame uh you know compared to the tacoma it's very similar a lot of the suspension components anti-sway bars everything looked really beefy the connectors on the drive shaft everything looked real similar i just i just didn't like that rust there I was like man it, i wish there could be maybe there's maybe it's lacking some undercoating i don't think this should this stuff should be rusted even just from sitting in here in the winter even if it was piled up with snow which is entirely possible I just think that this probably shouldn't be rusted out. So that that concerned me a little bit, but if you keep it clean and pay attention to it, I don't think this would happen on a new truck. Who knows, maybe this came from a flood area and that's why they want to do discounts on it. <laughs> Here's a little shot of that pumpkin and drive line back there. So different design for sure. Got leaf springs, you know, compared to the Tacoma's design, it's it's definitely going to ride different. It's probably going to be a more old school ride here in the Frontier. It is boxed out, has a lot of the cross bracing that the uh, Tacoma had. And this Frontier is 45, 960 on the sticker, but they were already down below 40 when I talked to them. So when you look under here, kind of a similar story with the Tacoma, you know, where we had that, you know, the body right there you can kind of see it the body comes down and you got you know that drop below very similar clearance in this versus the tacoma on the just the standard non-trd frame is super thick i felt like the nissan frame I, I can't i didn't verify the thickness i wish i would have brought a little tool to verify the actual thickness of the steel but it, it was a little beefier feeling and looking frame um, and then this transfer case to me looked 
gigantic compared to the Tacomas. I'm not sure why I didn't look at the, I didn't verify the part numbers or brands. It just looked, looked huge. And then one of the most important differences I found was right here on this cross member on the frontier. It is, it's a much thicker, at least to me, looked a lot more rigid in this center section and across here. And then it had these V cross members that connected up to the front of the frame. The Tacoma didn't have these. So you had the center cross and then these V's on each side that kind of brace it like this. So you can imagine if you're going down the road, hitting curbs, doing whatever, it's it's gonna prevent that flex and that body roll, I would imagine. Could just be the looks of it. I could be completely wrong with the way it actually drives, but this actually looks to me on the frame design like it would handle more like a very rigid ladder box truck, you know, where it's not gonna have a lot of flex in that, in the turns and heavy hits. Drive line looks very similar to Tacoma, pretty beefy looking. You'll notice this on obviously on Toyotas or versus the Frontier and the Colorado. Frontier and the Colorado have this like black RTV around. You'll see that on the diffs and the transfer case where you see that orange gasket style seal on a to Toyota. <clears throat> and I haven't had any issues with Nissan's leaking with this. Um, so it's just, just preference. I, I, I've had such good luck with those Toyota orange gaskets. Now we'll head in here to the front suspension. Sorry about the camera, a little uh, got a little cord in the way. Upper control arm to me looked very similar to the to the Tacoma. I couldn't really tell much of a difference in you know how beefy they were. This frame frontier frame here actually looked a little bit thicker to me than the Tacoma. Looked a little bit more rigid, but again probably not going to matter that both of them were really good sized frames and looked very rigid to me. I think it's like splitting hairs, both all, all of them really, even the Colorado frame looked great too. And you'll see here, I mean, this is the base frontier. You compare this to, you know, what I showed you on the Tacoma. I mean, just an example of like, this is, this has more similar ground clearance. If you take that plastic thing off the Tacoma, they're probably real similar underneath, but just nice to not have that plastic or not have to remove it. And then the frontier, I believe this also has that aluminum skid plate here, which the Tacoma did not have. So this was all felt and this on the frontier, I think this is aluminum. Front suspension there does look a little bit like a different design than the Tacoma, a little bit more, a little bit more old, old school. Looks pretty solid to me. And you know, this is the driver's side CV coming into the pumpkin. I will note you know, the pumpkin on this, I've never seen an issue with Nissans and their, their front drive shafts or anything or their pumpkins, but this is aluminum, not cast iron. I personally don't care if this is cast iron. I think it's fine. If you cover it and you're protecting it underneath, it's not going to matter. You'll note this is where the ADD is on the Tacoma. And you'll see this is just a straight shaft here. No electronics, no extra collars or spine, splines or anything in here. It just goes straight to the CV shaft. You can make the decision for yourself if you think this is going to be more reliable or not. I think there are pros and cons to both. The Frontier might have issues with other things that, that the Tacoma doesn't, but who knows? That part alone, it, it's a drastic of enough difference between the, the two designs that might sway someone just given the TFL issues. And this right here, You'll see how thick this frame is and the reinforcement around here. And this is a really good shot where, you know, this, the Tacoma and the Colorado both didn't really have this cross member right here. If you look, it's got it on both sides and it's like a V right there. You can see it. It's like this V that comes to this huge cross member here. It's right in the middle of the truck. And then you got the main part of the frame here and these cross members. Again, I can't prove or disprove that this is better or more rigid, just visually looking at this, it looked stronger on the front of the truck underneath, I, just being honest and may or may not be true, but you know, looks can be deceiving. Now this is very similar the, to the Tacoma underneath the front diff and right here, you know, in the transmission area, you still have the same story, no skid plates. I would still, me personally, I would add skid plates to this truck and the Tacoma both. I would just get something underneath there to at least pr protect that front diff. I think the transmission in all this area is far enough up, but I would protect a little more of this truck underneath if I was taking it off road. Same as the Tacoma. There's another shot of that front diff. The frontier front diff. And you can see on the frontier here, this, oil, this is the oil pan on the engine. 
I think that's hanging down lower than the Tacoma. I don't like the way that's hanging. I mean, that's another reason why I'd put something underneath this. You could just hit a bad rock on the interstate or something, right? And just, this just bugs me. It's a truck. Come on, cover this stuff up. The oil pan's kind of vital. Another thing I noticed, uh, this on the frontier, these are the send and return lines for the transmission. And these, these either, they go up to the radiator and have a separate cooler. I, I didn't get to look at the, the, you know, how they designed that, but these lines, these flex lines, I just don't like them. There's a 90 degree bend here. I wish they'd use a mandrel bent aluminum tube. Why risk having a, a leak in your transmission here with, you know, a flex line? I don't think it's going to get cut. It's it's more just this the durability of this line over time. Like I want something to last 20 or 30 years. I'd prefer to see solid aluminum here. And then here's the new transmission. This is a ZF transmission. People have had pretty good luck with it, but this is a plastic pan. I've replaced these on the old ZF six speeds on BMWs. And this pan has an integrated, I think this one is like the old ones. It has an integrated filter in it. You just replace the whole pan, but they were notorious for leaking on BMWs. Let's hope it's not on the frontier, but the you know ZF as a whole, I thought made good transmissions. They were solid. And this is just a shot of the engine. You could see standard oil filter, similar to Toyota's low. One thing I will note, the alternator up here, it is lower than the Tacoma. So if you're one of those guys that likes to snorkel your truck and take it through rivers and submerse the whole engine for long periods of time, Frontier might not be the one for you because the alternator is a little bit lower. Most people that have been doing overlanding and stuff haven't had any issue with this design. All right, moving on to the Chevy Colorado. This is the standard version, not the Trail Boss, not the AT4X that I'm gonna show you here in a minute as well. This is just the standard uh, Chevy Colorado. Still got good ground clearance, looks nice. I really do dig the looks of the Colorado. I just think they're a really well-designed truck. I actually like the looks of all these trucks, but as you can see here, super scientific way of measuring ground clearance. Um, you know, this one, the Colorado obviously has more ground clearance than that Tacoma maybe even a little more than the Frontier, designed appropriately, in my opinion, for a for a non-trail boss truck. Suspension frame inside here all looked very similar to the Taco to me and looked pretty beefy. The upper control arm size didn't look like it was underbuilt or anything on the Colorado. I, I do like the ZR2s as well. The frame size here looked maybe a little bit smaller than what we saw on the on the frontier. Hard to say what the diameter or the thickness of the steel is because I didn't measure it. Jury's still out on that one. Did look like a really good sized uh, anti-sway bar there as well. And everything underneath looked fairly well designed. Again, all these trucks, they look, they look similar. This looks good and clean. All the, you know, the frame here, the frame is very thick on the Colorado, as you can see looks pretty good and beefy some cross bracing there this is very similar the tacoma just goes straight across there was no cross uh, like an angle brace like the frontier had for that reinforcement from the center to the to the front as you can see here too the transmission pan is metal uh, i have heard that people have had some problems with these colorado transmissions i know a, another youtuber that's gone through a Silverado and a Colorado and both of them have been shuttering with very low mileage. So I can't say that their transmissions are very good. I haven't, haven't owned one. There's a lot of people with high mileage on them and then there's people that have problems, but that's, that's every brand. I will say it's tucked up there pretty high. I think that was one thing I noticed in the Colorado was looked like a little more ground clearance on the Colorado and maybe things were tucked up a little bit higher inside that frame. There's a kind of a peek at that upper control arm. It's a little bit thin on the Colorado, but about, I think it's real similar in rigidity, but did look a little thin on that front side. Again, these are the non-off-road, not like we're looking at ZR2s or something. A little different design on the GM oil filters on the bottom here. Probably makes a lot less mess than the Taco and the Frontier when you're doing oil changes because this is going to drain straight down. Oil pan, uh, I do like the location of the oil pan on the Chevy. Look at how much higher that is than the Taco and the Frontier. I mean, a good six to eight inches up above the frame. So I do like that design. And it was one of the trucks I felt like you could take it off road, at, out, even the non-Trail Boss version, and you're not going to be smacking the diff or smacking the oil pan. So I did like that design. Give the Colorado props for that. This is a metal cover right here. Uh, near the diff so it's it's 
protecting a little bit more than what the Tacoma and the Frontier had under there. So you've got this front protection on the Colorado, and then you have this extra little piece of metal right here. It's not protecting the diff and all this, but it is, it, it's just a little bit more. Now, if you ended up backing out of something and you were stuck and dragging this, this, this would act like a scoop, but it is metal though. No fabric in the Chevy Colorado on the bottom. Again, looks pretty beefy, pretty solid under here. That's all metal. You know, things you'd expect on a truck, right? This uh, middle member, this middle cross member on the frame, not quite, not, you know, not as beefy as the Frontier, but definitely it was plenty thick as far as the height of it. The transfer case kind of looks similar to the Frontier, very big transfer case, hangs down a little bit, a little bit more than the, the Tacoma, but uh, not a not a huge difference there in ground clearance between the three. Um, and I would, you know, if I was taking it off road a lot, man, I'd be, I'd be throwing stuff underneath this entire thing. There was this piece of plastic back here. You'll notice it's for that charcoal filter, you know, the, the emissions garbage on the gas tank, and that could be busted off pretty easy. There's a decent shot of kind of transfer case and just how much height you got, you know, up, up inside. I don't know if the cab, maybe a lot of this ground clearance kind of pushes into the cab height. Maybe there's less room in the cab height wise in the Colorado. I'm not really sure if there's any sacrifice there or if the entire truck just sits higher. There's that little piece of plastic back by this charcoal and the gas tank, kind of a goofy design. I think that could get busted off pretty easy on a rock, but whatever drive shaft, you know, on the Colorado that looked all super stout, just like the other two. They're pushing a lot of torque through these little engines. So, you know, got these, these midsize trucks, they are a lot beefier than they used to make them. I, I, I will give them that. I mean, look at the size of this frame. They are built a lot, a lot more beefy underneath. And then we have more of a traditional like leaf spring design, you know, we're like similar to the, to the frontier back here. Here's a shot of the didn't come out that well. I need to bring a light next time, but you got the CV axle here in the front diff. And this is actually where the ADD was on the, um, on the Tacoma. And I can't tell if this, you know, for me, I didn't look up this part online. I couldn't tell if this is actually similar to the Tacoma where this is like an ADD actuator into this, this part of the axle. So could be a similar design to the Tacoma. I know GM has, you know, been chasing gas mileage and stuff as well. So that would make a little difference, I would think. And if we look under here, this is actually plastic on the Colorado right here. So this part is plastic. It's not going to catch a lot, but so, you know, you kind of got a difference. Like the Tacoma was this piece of junk fabric right here. And then there was nothing else. The Colorado has this plastic here and then metal near the kind of back near the diff. And the frontier was aluminum right here and then nothing back on near that diff so kind of a smattering of garbage on all three and here's a shot of that the back of that colorado and kind of the clearance to me this looks like you know it looks good enough if you kind of draw a line here and and look at that from the tire up that looks good enough to me looks similar to the frontier might be hanging down a little bit more than the frontier definitely felt better than the tacoma for off-road wouldn't feel like I was going to be dragging it if I was being careful. And just to give you an idea of the ground clearance difference, here's this GMC AT4X on the right with, you know, factory lift and big tires. And then we got the trail boss here in the center. And then you can see the one, you know, this, the regular Colorado here. We'll get a pretty good shot of the ground clearance difference. So, you know, get an inch or two here and there. And it, it's pretty substantial when you jump up to that AT4X or the ZR2, but kind of cool. Let me know what you guys thought down below. I hope this helps someone out. I personally don't really enjoy watching all of these same reviews done over and over with everybody touching infotainment buttons and telling you how CarPlay works. I wanted to provide you guys with something maybe a little different. Look at the mechanical side, how things are built and just how they put it together underneath the truck. I think for me, that's just more interesting. And that tends to be what fails when you're out on a ranch. Hopefully this helped someone out and, and gave you some more information. Anyway, share it with someone if you thought it was interesting. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time.